Hi, Ray Sievert with Tracy Technologies. We have an interesting case today that taught me a lot about the industry standard. We typically use six millimeters of cornea to look at spherical aberration and, and high order aberrations and other things. But is that the right number? I'm actually here to tell you, no, it's not. One size doesn't fit all. It depends on how big the pupil is. Let's dive into this case. This is a 38 year old uh, female ophthalmologist I met in my travels. And she came in and she said, oh, I have pretty good vision, but I mapped her. And I said, uh, wow, I don't, I don't think you do. Let's look. A history of prior refractive surgery, a very decentered LASIK with a flat spot here and a very steep uh, spot here. And her cornea, as you can tell, is not very good. This is best corrected. And her DLI is also low because there's a lot of high order aberrations as the lens tries to compensate the crazy cornea. And so her total vision is not good. So let's take a look at what happens to the cornea when we actually try to look at it in a meaningful way. This is a very busy display, but this is corneal information. And each of these buckets is a type of aberration. So all the coma would be put together in one bucket. All the spherical aberration, which you can see is 0.483. That's pretty high. That's what we say at six millimeters of cornea. There's the trefoil, there's the secondary astigmatism, there's the astigmatism. You can see she has a lot of corneal issues. What I'd like to do is show you how the eye trace teaches you and makes you think. When you decrease the zone size, because she has a small pupil, about three millimeters, watch as that number goes down. And when you get to three millimeters, it's not ideal by far, but it's a whole lot better. And now the aberrations total are 0.265. So people that say you need to look at the corneal aberrations at six millimeters, I don't know what they're talking about. It really depends on how big the patient's pupil is. This is a young lady with a small pupil, thank goodness, because when her pupil's small, she can see reasonably well. I would argue that she says she has good vision. She doesn't. She doesn't know what good vision is apparently, but I'm saying that at three millimeters of pupil, her vision's not nearly as bad as it is at six. And you see, this is her high order aberrations at three millimeters. And when you go back up to six, it's off the charts, it's off the scale. So I don't know why the industry persists with this six millimeters of cornea. I think it's a throwback to LASIK when people started using high order aberrations as a way to look at optics. And so LASIK could have a six millimeter uh, ablation zone. So that makes some sense. But when it comes to cataract surgery, Using six millimeters of cornea to look at doesn't make sense. What does make sense is look at the patient's pupil size and then determine what are the aberrations that the patient actually lives with. For example, when you take a, a, an eye trace scan on a dilated eye, you're looking through parts of the optical system that the patient never uses. Why would that matter to you? It's, uh, it's almost nonsensical. What is the patient's nighttime pupil? That's what drives their vision. That's what we ought to measure. And in this case, thank goodness, her pupil is only three millimeters because her vision was reasonably okay. I hope this case makes you think. And when the industry tells you to look at spherical aberration at six millimeters on the cornea, ask yourself, is that really what I need to do? Or do I need to assess the patient's pupil size and then determine if they'll get benefit from an aspheric lens? I hope this helps, but this is an interesting case and it shows you that the pupil dynamics are really important when it comes to high order aberrations.